what is up guys this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi Note 10 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest MSM extended ROM based on Android 12. This is the 15th December 2021 build again so pretty much latest build and if you don't know how to flash this ROM I have made a complete guide to flash any custom ROM on the Redmi Note 10 Pro. You can check that out from the cards or the description and all the important links that you need to actually flash this ROM or any other stuff that I talk about will be present in the description so do not worry. First show you the about section. This is how it looks like. In the Android version we have the extended logo up there and we have the Android version as Android 12 of course. You can make the clock to this 12 o'clock and then it will do that Android 12 kind of animation as you can see. So this looks beautiful. Let me go back and here if you scroll down more we have the extended version as the XS first blood official build and the maintenance name is Basharat and the security patch is latest of December 5th 2021 and here is the build date 13th December here it shows the stock kernel here is the perf G kernel. That's pretty much it about the about section and right now let me go into the system and the device specific settings and from here you can choose the refresh rate of the device and you can enable the DC dimming option from right here. Yes, this one does support DC dimming and it does work super fine, no issues with that. And we have the Mi Audio Direct and there we have all these presets. I have been using it with the Youth Edition. The sound quality with the headphone jack and Bluetooth as well is amazing. And my Boat Rockers 335 has been working amazingly well over here in the storm. No issues with that. And we have the sound presets from right here. Then we have the Hi-Fi audio option too. You can use that. Let me go back from here. We have this system updater too over here. It may work whenever there is a new update, but this is the latest build as of right now. And inside language and input, you will see the Gboard is the default keyboard over here. And everywhere I feel the whole ROM is very, very snappy. The first thing you will notice after flashing this ROM is that this ROM comes with right out of the box 0.5x animations. So everywhere you tap, the animations are very, very snappy. No issues whatsoever that you will face. Let me open this particular app. Just notice how fast it opens. And yes, 120 hertz all the time is working perfectly fine. No issues with that as you can see 120 FPS. So yeah, 120 hertz is working perfectly fine here. No issues with that. Everything that you open opens almost instantly and it looks very, very cool. All the animations everywhere like this going home and stuff. Everything is very fast and snappy. As you can see, switching between apps is not a problem at all. Everywhere, the whole UI is very, very fast and snappy again. Now, let's talk about the stock camera. Well, this ROM comes with this very basic kind of old kind of Google camera. I did not even open it. So yeah, this is the old kind of Google camera that you will get right out of the box. But I don't like that. That's why I have installed the Gcam. And yes, this is the Gcam Go version and that is working perfectly fine. Also, I have installed this kind of Gcam. This is the Unix version, the latest version. This is working perfectly fine too. No issues with this one. And yes, you can get all the like XML and stuff from the description box below. Don't worry. And again, with this Gcam, the 0.66 x lens is actually working fine. Okay, super macro lens. The ID4 is actually the wide angle lens. So yeah, and yeah, the main camera is actually working fine. Even the front camera as well is working perfectly fine. No issues with that. Now let's talk about the stock launcher, shall we? Well, in the home screen, if you go into the settings, as you can see, this is how the settings panel looks like. Of course, we have the double tap gesture and stuff and we have the action toast etc by the way this is the quick step launcher that is present by default here and talking about the recent panel this is how it looks like we have the screenshot then the close app then clear all the apps from memory then we have this lock app option that is pretty cool also we have the shared screen option from right here so this is how the recent panel looks like you can of course scroll through the apps just like this of course now let's talk about the home screen shall we well if you are noticing this red kind of youtube studio icon don't blame me blame google for this because Google did not even like implemented the Android 12 kind of theming option for the YouTube studio icon for some reason. But yeah, if you go into the wallpaper and style, as you can see, I have enabled this themed icons. And of course, you can change the wallpapers from right here. The app grid also you can change. So yeah, this is how it looks like with the like themed icons. And you can also enable the dark theme with the dark theme. This is how it looks like. It looks beautiful everywhere, even in the dark theme, by the way. The dark theme looks pretty good over here. I have been using the device with the dark theme, no issues whatsoever. And yes, this is how the quick setting panel looks like if you swipe down. Also, let me show you the like double tapping to sleep in the home screen. That works perfectly fine. As you can see, I can tap the finger scanner and that just unlocks. Let me actually enable the always on display for the time being. Let me just do this. And as you can see, this is how the always on display looks like. Looks pretty beautiful, I would say. Sometimes, yes, I have seen always on display goes a little buggy again over here too. So that's how it is as of right now. It's not going buggy as of right now. Okay, so in the video, Okay, so it did happen, I think, once. 
So yeah, right now, as you can see, the double tap to wake is not working for some reason. So this just happens in the always on display sometimes. So I think this is almost a known bug. Let me try one more time. Let me show you the Fingbit scanner speed. So yeah, the Fingbit scanner is very fast and snappy. No issues whatsoever. As you can see from right here, I'm just tapping the Fingbit scanner. That should unlock. Yes. This unlocks pretty fine. And this unlocking and like locking animation, as you are noticing, looks pretty dope. Talking about the quick setting panel, we have plethora of quick setting panel toggles and I have added a couple of them. I'll show you those, but let me show you, we can add the normal internet toggle and we have the on the go, then the airplane mode, mic and camera access, the extra dim option and all the other app options are there. And I have added plethora of toggles over here. Let me show you which I have added. There is a Vaulty icon again in the status bar that you have been noticing. And we have the Wi-Fi icon over here, mobile data and stuff. Bluetooth and the flashlight etc is of course there and the screen recorder is also there we have the device audio and the microphone audio recording at the same time that works super fine and let me show you some more like the always on display then the always on display on charge is there you can just put it to always on display and the hotspot the do not disturb toggle and the data saver etc then we have the nearby shared the night light also works fine as you can see right now the display turned yellowish that works fine and this is actually the sound toggle so if you tap and hold on it you get the volume panel just like this the volume panel looks dope and the screenshot option is there then the heads up and the refresh rate you can also change from right here if you want to put it to 60 hertz or something then you can do that and we have the home or device controls from right here if you have some smart home lights or something you can use those and yes of course the quick setting panel is very fast and snappy no issues whatsoever and we have this quick pull down of over here i'll show you all the customizations this rom has plethora of customizations overall and here we have the power menu and you get the advanced reboot over here too so you can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here no issues with that so inside extensions we have all the customizations if you want to skip this part you can skip it with the time stamps but yeah let me show you the customizations right now inside extensions you will get the customizations of course and yes the msm extended rom is known for amazing amount of customizations and this is no different this rom has huge customizations pretty much everywhere first things first we have the themed icons so from here you can use the custom colors if you want to by the way this is the monet kind of engine with that it takes the like colors from the wallpaper itself so that works super fine and we have the dark theme over here let me go back also from here you can change the like let me actually enable this so from here you can enable the pitch black kind of stuff from right here so this is great that you can actually get pitch black in android 12 right now with this theming engine in the dark theme and that's just amazing but right now for the time being i'll just disable the dark theme let me go back from here and we have the headline and body fonts and you get plethora of body fonts already over here so that's amazing let me go back we have the ambient mode and here we have the edge lighting although i haven't seen the edge lighting working over here but yeah the option is there then we have the show always show on aod etc for the edge lighting and we have the light repeat mode and stuff let me go back in the animations we have the power menu animation and we have the animation style etc not really helpful for me in the buttons we have the reorient music control etc let me go back in the gestures here is where things get interesting in the system settings we have the quickly open camera the one-handed mode press and hold power button and stuff so from here you can enable the assistant if you want to and here we have the swipe to take screenshot first let me show you yes it does work and as you can see there is the edit and delete option also if you are in a particular app where there is a lot of like space to scroll actually let me show you over here so if i take the screenshot i can capture more from right here if i do that and as you can see i can capture more stuff from here by just selecting it and you can just save it or share it from right here this is just amazing options i would say and we have the brightness control so you can slide a finger on the status bar to actually adjust the brightness of the screen this is again a very helpful and handy feature now the next thing on the list is the power button toggle torch that works super fine long pressing the power button does enable the torch here or toggle it and we have the double tap to sleep on the lock screen and status bar both work super fine no issues with that now in the lock screen we have the show media artwork lock screen charging info also shows up and this is how it looks like while charging In the navigations, we have the system navigations, of course, and in the settings, we have the left edge, right edge customization, swipe to invoke assistant and the amount of screen height to be used. And right now I have put it to just about length long. That's why, as you can see, the just about length is quite long on the bottom right here. And the haptic feedback, you can also enable the haptic feedback is good enough, I would say. So yeah, let me go into the advanced gestures. 
Here we also have the extended swipe action so you can customize this however you want to take a screenshot or open camera etc and there is the two button and three button navigations as well so amazing amount of customizations again are present over here let me go back to the notifications here we have the heads up enabling or disabling option and the breathing sms breathing missed call etc show notification count notification headers etc options are there in the power menu we have the hide on lock screen option so that's cool and the advanced reboot option is there so you can enable it or disable it from right here and we have the power menu dim background amount and when the opacity you can customize so that's great let me go back and in the quick setting panel we have the show brightness slider and we have the show brightness slider on the bottom then we have the show brightness slider in quick setting panel too and the adaptive brightness button is there so as you can see in the quick setting panel this is the adaptive brightness button this looks beautiful here we have the vibrate on toggle touch and quick pull down option is there so you can customize that from right or left let me go back to the status bar and here we have the system icons headset bluetooth etc icons you can enable it from right here then we have the clock and date of course you can enable the clock style to left center or right however you want to and the show seconds option is there am pm style date etc customizations are there even you can change the clock font size on the status bar that's just amazing and even we have the quick setting clock font size changing option and here we have the traffic indicators by the way i'm using this separate app for this and we have the status bar battery indicator from here we have this R style battery icon that's why you are seeing this battery icon looks like this but of course you can have these many options to actually choose from if you want to change the battery icons to even more even the big dotted circle and stuff are there if you want those right now we have the left battery text and we have the battery percentage you can have it inside the icon or outside the icon and we have the charging animation or the charging symbol near battery so that's great you can change it to however you want to and the quick setting battery percentage is there and we also have the battery bar if you want to enable that you can we have the carrier label the status bar logo etc you can enable a custom logo from right here and the volty icon this is set to dynamic but we can change it to whatever you want and the hide call strength icons are there and we have the volty icon enabling or disabling option roaming indicator old mobile data icons these kind of things are there let me go back to the extras inside extras we have this shift nav bar and status bar icons to prevent burning well i haven't looked upon it but yeah this feature is there so it's cool if it's actually protecting burning that's really good and we have the wake up on charge disabling option and the charging animation and the two step icons are there then we have the framework values you can of course customize the status bar padding if you want to but by default this is how it looks like and the status bar padding by default it's fine i don't see it as a problem in the battery settings this is how it looks like well it doesn't give you a lot of information at all but yeah you can of course see the battery usage by just clicking over here and we have the battery manager and stuff but let me actually talk about the battery life i have tested it with this aku battery app let's actually scroll down as you can see i have been getting about nine hours and nine minutes of screen on time and the screen off actually shows as 47 hours of like the standby time then the combined use is about 13 and a half hours so i would say the battery life is really amazing over here and i have been daily driving this rom been using this rom pretty heavily this is the battery health that i have got but talking about the charging speed yes i have seen it going about 4000 milliamps with a 33 watt charger so that's great the charging speed is not a problem over here again 9 plus hours of screen on time for a particular rom is just amazing again with a android 12 rom you are getting 9 plus hours of screen on time that's just amazing in my frank opinion and pretty much no complaints from me at least regarding the battery life of this rom right now let me go into the sound settings and this is how it looks like we have these icons everywhere it looks beautiful with all these icons let me scroll down we have the vibrate for calls then the dial pad tone screen locking sound screenshot server sound etc options are there and again the sound quality is great in the display settings again we have the animation we have the brightness level the adaptive brightness in the lock screen we have the always show time and info double tap to wake on doors and the wake screen for notification option is there then we have the screen timeout you can set it to up to 30 minutes and the lock screen timeout again you can set from right here in the font size display size the dpi you can change the night light option is there and inside colors i will recommend you guys Pull it to saturated that's how you will get the best colors and we have the rotation settings and from here we of course have the 180 degree too if you want that and the double tap to wake again is there let me scroll down and inside security this is how it looks like of course we do not have much things and we still have only the frame scanner option no face unlock no app lock as of right now but that's fine in my frank opinion this is very early stage of the builds and already i feel this is one of the best experience overall in terms of the software that i have been getting even opening apps are pretty fast and snappy and opening apps first time it's pretty fast as you can see so yeah no issues whatsoever that I have faced here and yep all the apps does open pretty fast 
as you can see again. So yeah, very snappy experience with Android 12 that I have been getting pretty much. This MSM extended ROM has been one of my favorites so far, actually based on Android 12 at least. And everywhere you have this kind of animation. We have all the new kind of things like the clock and stuff. Everywhere you see this big bold icons in the clocks. Also in the calculator app and stuff. Everywhere you see this new design which looks pretty much amazing. And again the lock screen looks so beautiful in Android 12. That's like it doesn't look like anything else. It looks like pretty much amazing in the lock screen. That's the most interesting thing about Android 12 I feel. And again, the fingerprint scanner speed is blazing fast, no issues whatsoever. The widgets in the home screen are working fine. Saying, OK, Google does actually work, as you can see. And the Google Assistant is not a problem. The voice trigger is actually working perfectly fine. No issues with that. Now, let's talk about some more things. The IR Blaster of this particular ROM is actually working fine again, as you can see. IR Blaster is not a problem. The safety net passes right out of the box, so you can use banking apps over here without any issues at all. The DRM info shows as L1 so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p without any issues again. Now talking about the overall performance here at the Android 20 Geekbench score with a CPU stress test. And talking about the performance again, I have been facing no lags or stutters at all. Sometimes yes, with 120Hz it does feel a little bit choppy. But I would say whenever you are multitasking or something, it does feel a little bit choppy here and there. But overall the performance everywhere is amazing. And scrolling and stuff, just notice how smooth it is. The scrolling I mean. So that's what I feel about this particular ROM that this is one of the best experience again I have ever got in Android 12 with so many customizations and everywhere the fluidity and stuff is great even for video calls there is a black border in the front camera so it won't give you the halo effect you don't need to worry about those the banking apps works right out of the box and you get that blazing fast experience while opening apps and stuff everywhere as you can see the switching between apps too is very very fast and snappy experience nowhere i have seen a major issue at all the battery life is great the performance is great again so yeah pretty much i would say if you don't need anx camera as of now because anx camera is not supported on android 12 if you don't need that you can definitely switch to this particular dom it will give you amazing experience on top of android 12. so that's pretty much it that's what i think about the msm extended drum based on android 12 the latest built on the redmi note 10 pro let me know in the comments what you guys think give this video a thumbs up if you liked it subscribe to the channel if you have not yet this is tito from kdn tech signing off for today and i'll be catching you guys in the next one bye bye now